Walker County Jane Doe was found on the side of I-45 in Walker County, Texas, near Huntsville. She had been brutally beaten, raped. She had been strangled with a pair of pantyhose. They still have never been able to figure out who Walker County Jane Doe is. Part of the trick to making a deceased person look alive is, is a lot of it is in the cheeks. When somebody dies, their cheeks flatten out. So all the puffiness of their cheeks completely disappears in death. When I first started working on it, this was the only photo we had of her. You can see her lips have been sewn shut. I spent my whole entire day researching unidentified John Doe and Jane Doe cases. This has been my life for the last 10 years and probably will continue to be. The mystery is still unsolved. My whole life I've been kind of anonymous. I wake up every morning, I go to work. In my spare time, I work on these cases. Whether it's doing forensic art or whether it's online sleuthing, I've kind of established myself and have become pretty well known in that regard. A local accountant turned forensic artist is helping identify Solving bodies. Solving a 12-year-old cold case, how an artist helped identify a Jacksonville woman killed hundreds of miles away. He makes facial reconstruction drawings. With no identification, cops couldn't figure out who she was for years. Carl Koppelman pours over a list of thousands of missing people. I went right onto Web Sleuth and put up the words bingo. Carl Koppelman will never forget the phone call you made. Back when I first started, I was just an internet sleuth like everybody else on Web Sleuth. Web Sleuth is a online chat forum where people can log on and discuss cases of all kinds. These are people who come from all walks of life. They all have all different backgrounds and not, don't necessarily have any training in investigative techniques, but they all use their God-given talents to try to solve these cases in, in the ways they know best. The very first reconstruction I did I was on Web Sleuth. There was one case out of Philadelphia. There wasn't a whole lot of reconstruction to do because he had just recently died and he wasn't decomposed. So really all I, all I did was put open eyes on him and straighten his mouth out and then put the Philadelphia Eagles jersey on him. You know, if you're putting something on your Facebook page, most people aren't going to reshare an image of a dead person. So if you've got this very respectful presentation, people will share it. You can go on to Web Sleuth and there's threads for each of these Jane Doe's. As you can see here, Huntsville, Walker County, Jane Doe. This is my pet case. This is the one I've been working on. You know, a pet case would be a case that a person spends most of their time on. When I first started working on it, this was the only photo we had of Walker County, Jane Doe. In this case, she had been embalmed. Her cheeks were badly sagged from postmortem sagging. My first attempts to do this were very uh, crudely done. I look back at them now and I think, you know, these look terrible, but I thought they looked okay at the time. I've always been kind of interested in unsolved mysteries. That may be a common thread throughout my upbringing. I would follow crime stories and the evil people do to each other. Back in the 70s, I was in junior high school at the time. My brother had a friend named John LeMay. He had been murdered and dismembered and his headless body was found in a rest stop. As it turned out, he was the victim of a serial murderer named Patrick Kearney. He was known as the trash bag murderer. He had killed more than 20 young men and boys. For some reason in the 70s, there were a lot of those stories. There was also, of course, Ted Bundy, and there was the Hillside Strangler that caught my attention. You know it's a tragic story, but it doesn't hit home the same way it does when it's actually someone you've seen and known around town. This was the depiction I had done of the Utah Jane Doe. You can still see the embalming effects on this face, so what I will do is take a live face maybe same complexion, you can go transparent. So I'll probably do it maybe 20 or 25 
steps in adjusting the contrast on the post-mortem photo so that the features come through, but you adjust the transparency on the overlay so that the skin tone and complexion comes through. Eventually, you'll have all the structural elements of the deceased person, but all the skin tone and, and vitality from the living person. And I can add in a background and I add in my signature. Oops, that's not the right signature. Then I can add in a signature. I used to like to draw as a child. I was given the God-given talent of being able to draw faces. It was how I dealt with boredom in high school. I would just sit in the back and draw caricatures of the other students in the class. As I started getting involved in this, I found that, you know, I could put those talents to a more noble use to be of service to the community. You know, there are some I can do in probably four or five hours, and there's others it takes two or three days. It just all depends on, on what I'm starting with. From the very beginning, when I did that guy in Philadelphia, my skills were very limited. Over the years, I developed my ability, and I, it became apparent to me that, hey, I'm sitting around here taking care of my mother, and I don't have the ability to, you know, go leave the house anytime I want to, so I'm sitting here on the computer, and this is a good way for me to become, uh, you know, to do something positive. These are all photos of my mother. I set up this uh, little shrine, to, so to speak. In 2009, I had to leave my career as an accountant and become her full-time caretaker. So that was kind of how I got into the, the world of internet sleuthing because I was home most of the time. It wasn't unusual at all for me to spend 10, 12 hours a day with a Walker County Jane Doe case. This was pre-embalming, so you could see that her mouth had a much different look. I created this image from there, and this was still when my skills were quite crude. And eventually, as I kept developing and developing, I came up with this version. By 2016, I was able to come up with this version. I must have revised this image probably 20, 30 times over the years. I spent a lot of my time thinking about who was this girl, what was her life like. Walker County Jane Doe was a teenage girl, probably about 15 or 16 years old. She had been hitchhiking and was dropped off in Huntsville, Texas at this gas station and asked the gas station manager for directions to the, the men's prison, where the worst of the worst prisoners are being housed in Texas. And she continued on. And later in the evening, at a truck stop on the north side of town, spoke with the waitress, again asked directions to the men's prison. The waitress immediately thought something was odd because she, she appeared way too young to be out on the street on her own, and asked her, uh, do your parents know where you are? She's, she's kind of flippantly responded, who cares? Then the girl went out the door of the diner, and the following morning, the girl's body was found about four or five miles north of Huntsville, abused, tortured, strangled, and left naked aside uh, northbound I-45. Nobody's come forward to claim her body. No one has reported her missing. The police went to the men's prison in Huntsville and interviewed every employee and every inmate. Nobody admitted to having known her. This was Halloween night of 1980. I found it kind of interesting that I happened to remember that exact date. The story indicated that she was last seen asking directions to a men's prison. On that very night, I was 17 years old, attending a Halloween party dressed as a prison inmate. At probably the exact moment that she was walking across town from the gas station to the truck stop, I was about the same age as she. You know, maybe that's for another reason that I'm so interested in this case, is she, she was part of my generation. This is my Facebook page that I had created for Walker County Jane Doe, and as you can see, I created a few different images of her. I had this other post-mortem photo of her from a side view, so I had a friend who had a 10-year-old niece, and I asked her to stand in my driveway and stick her thumb out. And this is a Google Maps view of I-45 northbound. To be sitting in Los Angeles and, and reading about the case online is a completely different experience. So I went to Texas 
I read online that there were going to have a, a missing in North Texas event. While I'm in Texas, I could take a drive down to Huntsville and visit all the points of interest in the Walker County Jane Doe story. Well, most people probably wouldn't take a three-hour drive just to visit somebody at a cemetery, but this is something that I'm very much interested in. It, it becomes more real to you to actually stand at the grave and say, okay, the remains of this girl are right underneath my feet. I'll be overjoyed when this case is ultimately resolved because this is something that has consumed 10 years of my life. It takes someone who doesn't mind doing tedious, mundane, you know, spend a whole day looking at pictures in yearbooks. Most people wouldn't have the attention span or the patience to, to do something like that. Law enforcement agencies, they have plenty on their plate and they tend to deal with most urgent things. The cases of unidentified people aren't, aren't high priority cases for them. There's a void that needs to be filled and the online sleuthing community is doing their best to to address that need.